Welcome back to the Grit Gym, guys. You guys asked, and so you get. Rachel's back. Tuesday, she's going to do coffee again for you. She's going to show you how she does this for a one cup with her little tiny, little miniature uh, French press thing. What is that what you call that? Just a it's mini? It's like a one serving. It's just a one serving. So she's going to hit that in, uh, in a second here when the timer goes off because uh, coffee takes a little while to do the thing that whatever it does that you know about that I don't. I don't really know much about, but anyway, today we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about how your dreams, uh, how you can use your dreams to improve your life, how you can use your dreams to, to learn from, to improve your life, to, to get what you want in your life. And, uh, this is going to be an interesting talk because Rachel and I actually disagree wholeheartedly. No, not wholeheartedly. Not wholeheartedly? No. Just slightly, but we do disagree on this topic. So by the end of this, hopefully I can get her convinced of my way or I can understand her and she can understand me and our relationship can grow because of this. And hopefully you guys' relationship with us too, right? Sure. Yes. <laughs> what do you need to tell them about this? Or what um, do you want to tell them about coffee? this? Coffee? Yeah. Oh. Um, what about it? Well, it's a, I don't know, isn't it, well, the, I, I know this is a medium roast, so it's just not burnt to a crisp, basically, and I put it in that thing, and then I wait five minutes, and then I lift it, and then I push it down, and I pour it out, and, it's a French press. and it gives me a hug. It's a French press. That's about so all I know. it has to sit in the hot water before it's actually brewed. Like, it's not like a, um, it's not like an espresso where it's forced through with hot water, it's a French press. So you have, what did you set it for, four and a half minutes? Yeah, I set it for five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so for five minutes. And then once that's done, this will filter out the coffee beans and then you have regular coffee. So you don't need electricity. You can, this is good for camping. It is good for or camping. Or no electricity or something easy. What kind of coffee is it? Tell me about the coffee. Which one did you put in there? I put the medium one. What's the medium one? The same, the blues. Oh, okay. Um. Well, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know what you're asking. No, I don't have to be asking anything. But anyway, so guys, my position, my position on dreams. Uh, so coffee is like the opposite of sleeping, right? So maybe this is a good avenue. I don't know. But my position on dreams is that, uh, and the guy that I learned a lot of this mindset stuff from was. Uh, who I learned about dreams from, or how to look at dreams in a way that you can use them as a tool. So to me, dreams are like, whether you believe in this or you don't believe in this, I, I, I don't really care. You can sell yourself on whatever you want to be sold on, but uh, there are windows to your subconscious. So you can see things in your subconscious that you couldn't have seen had you not had the dream. Had the dream was a window to your subconscious, that your subconscious you don't really get, oh, time. No, but I'll just drink the rest of mine. So then she pushes it down, and then she pours it out, and then you feel really good in about 20 minutes. But anyway, so there are windows of subconscious, and your subconscious is, but uh, we like to think that our conscious, our conscious mind as humans is more important than our subconscious mind, and that it can trump it, that we can override our conscious mind. But our conscious mind has been around for a lot longer than our, our subconscious mind has been a lot longer, around a lot longer. That was pretty impressive, wasn't it? Yeah. Then our conscious mind has. So your subconscious will trump the conscience every time unless you're extremely aware of it. And so you have, when you start to challenge these things, these, uh, these things that you believe to you, that you believe are accurate, that you believe are true to you, they're truths, they're absolutes, um, that this is, that you could believe that this is black and I could believe that this is white and we could be arguing about colors and you could believe that uh, the color like this is actually black and that I can believe that this color is actually white and we would just be arguing each other's belief structures so it'd be true to us. And so like if you could be like, okay, well, if I could call a book a banana and the pages the peels, then it would be the same thing, just words and containers, then I just challenged a belief structure in my head. I might have a dream that happens because of that, because I, I challenged my truths and then you can learn about your truth from that dream as a, a symbolic sort of way. An example. An example? Of like, a dream. What's it? Well, okay, so... And how it has 
helped you figure out that dreams have something to do with your subconscious. My subconscious. So when I first learned about the dream thing, I was uh, I started talking to this guy um, that it was it was along the same lines. It was the first time I ever met him, and he was a sports psych coach, uh, and he he go and I said. I, I had this weird dream the other day, and uh, we weren't even talking about anything in particular. He's like, oh, yeah, what was the dream about? And it was, I was like, okay, well, you're going to take an interest in this? So, all right, I'll tell you. So I told him the dream, and uh, it was about, I was, it was when I was a kid. It was a dream about when I was a kid, and this didn't actually happen, but I was in the car with my dad, and, or in a truck with my dad, and we were on empty, like the truck was out of fuel. But we were going for, like, miles and miles, like 300 miles, always on empty. And I was like... And that was the whole dream. And Is he it got, reoccurring? It, it happened every once in a while, yeah. And he was like, well, I imagine that this, this, and this, and I imagine that this, this, and this. And I was like, you know nothing about me. And it wasn't like horoscope stuff where they just are really ambiguous with their statements. Like, he was dead on specific. And uh, I was like, okay, well, that's accurate. So that's weird. And so we started doing that, and, and I would, like, uh, we kind of became friends, and we and I started going back and forth with him. He would challenge me on certain things, and uh, we'd talk about stuff. But he said, I imagine that you, like, I forget what he said, but it was something about, like, basically it's symbolic of being exhausted. Like, you just feel like you're always running on empty. Like, you're always not, like, you don't have enough fuel to push through your day, that you're always exhausted because you can't. Uh, why was your dad there? I don't know why he was there. Maybe you just haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, maybe I just haven't figured that out. But, it, like, it was, it, it's like sim, sim, symbolic symbolism, isn't that? That's yeah, hot. symbolism. I bet that is pretty hot coffee. Uh, it's not ready yet. It's not your... Rachel likes it a little bit cooled down from... <sighs> it's probably perfect for you. But no, there's another one where... this the One of the most interesting dreams I've ever had was... Uh, was this time frame where it was it was not a very good, like happy moment like happy period in my life? There was a lot of changes happening all at once. The business was about to fail. I just got out of a terrible relationship. Uh, it was like the first year of Grit Gym. It was before you and I started, like maybe like a year and a half, two years before we started doing this thing. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, um, so I had this dream and I had made some decisions along the way, and uh, I was. I think I was 27 years old at the time, or 26 or whatever, and I just remember there was 27 cars. There was the same amount of cars uh, in a row as there was the years that I was old, and I was putting all these bags in, and everybody was really sad, and it was like this dream that I was going to go on a, on a uh, like a, what I kind of took out of it was this uh, dream that I was, I was going somewhere, and I wasn't going to come back the same way that I was when I left. Like a road trip or a trip? No, like... I was gone. Like, I was never coming back. Oh. Like, the same person was never coming back. Okay. Well, is that what happened? Yeah, basically. Yeah. You knew you were about to take a different road in your life? Yeah. And not come back the same? Yeah, and I didn't, I didn't come back the same at all. Why 27 cars, though? There was, I don't remember if I was 26 or 27 years old. Okay. But I know that there was the same number of cars as there was years that I was old. I just remember after I woke up and I was sitting there, I was like analyzing this dream and I was like, what does this mean? Like, this is so crazy. That was such an emotional ride. And, uh... So your dreams have themes. My dreams do. Yeah. Well, that's the theme that you got out of it. What do you mean by themes? Like, your dream... Your theme and that dream was like taking a new path and not coming back the same yeah it's basically what you got out of it yeah but what i learned from it yeah. yeah but a lot of other dreams they have their own themes like what what's what like the, what's a dream that you've had didn't you have a dream the other night that you were which one oh uh, the piper chloe dream what where it was like they had replaced, like you had replaced, yeah, replaced your siblings. Yeah, the weirdest. Basically, it was like my two little sisters who I care about a lot. Like somehow they were out of the picture, like gone or had died or something. And it was like somebody had stuck two new little 
like little imposter sisters. sisters. And I cared about them too. But it was like, I was like, how does nobody care or want to like remember our two other sisters that ha like are gone now? Like this is the saddest thing ever. It was like, we were just like replacements. Like, um, like your parents replacing your fish if to like see if you notice or something like so you don't get upset but it was like my sisters <laughs> what is your sister i don't know what the theme of that would be but so my thing my thought is like an like go into analysis mode is like like her little sisters are growing up they're teenagers now they're about oh, to go okay. from being little kids to being women yeah you know independent strong women so and not they're not the like they're, yeah, it's not like you're 16 years old and they're one anymore. So I'd imagine, like, a lot of, like, I don't know, I don't feel like a parent to them, but I feel like I've watched them grow up. I was old enough. They're 12 years younger than me. I was 12 when they were born. That's crazy. So I feel like I, I was old enough to be able to appreciate when they were small as a parent, you know, like. Yeah, so that's what, like, I'm looking at, like, the symbolism there and being like, okay, well, now you're a little bit scared that they're going to grow up and not be the same that they were, but you've accepted that they're not the same that they were anyway, so you still care about them. But your point on dreams is that they're not all symbolic, they're not all... I think it depends on, like, the depth of sleep that you're in. Like, you can, I don't know, I think... There's more weight in some of them than others. Sure, but a dream's a dream. Like, if you're dreaming, you're dreaming. Like, you know when you're in that, like, kind of twitchy stage where it's like you're just falling yeah. asleep and you, like, kind of maybe you trip or something? Like, you kind of jerk out of it? So, I've been, like, challenged, like, the thing at the vine. I've been challenged to <laughs> jump and hit the top of the ceiling with my hand and I cannot get it yet. But you're like close. But like I am close enough to the point where I've like been practicing in my dreams. And <laughs> the other day Ridiculous. I snoozed off and I jumped because I was like getting ready to leap up and hit the ceiling. And that's how much it was like affecting me. Like I didn't know it was like affecting me like that. See, like, that's why I think that they're symbolic. Like they're there. They are. They're in the back like, of your mind, they had but they're to, not in the you, front of your mind. They're you, not right here. They're like right here. You're not gonna forget about them. But they're, they're just, so like, like your mind had to create that. Like point of view. it had to create it based on something. I know. Yeah. And like, so it's like what, what a baby's dream about. Like, uh, like I've had the football dream before where I'm just so close to being able to, to tackle the guy and I don't quite get there. And if you look at that moment, my, those moments in my life, it's when I was like having a really hard time dealing with that not fear of not being enough. Like I was just close enough, but I didn't quite get so the guy. So your brain is using football as like a... My brain uses football for everything. Okay. <laughs> Almost right. anyway. That was like that was like a big realization in the mindset game is that football is not life. You never line up fifty yards away from somebody in real life and slam into each other as hard as you possibly can. You'd go to jail for that. So football's not like life. Even though coaches say that football's like life, that's bullshit. So your yeah, your brain is kind of picking up on things that you see in your everyday life and putting those situations into your yeah. theme of your dream. I think so. That's what I was saying. Like, what do you think babies dream about? I mean, they don't like, even have Like, wanting any... yeah, certain maybe, things. Like, maybe they drink all they think about it really is like, oh, I'm poopy. Oh, I, I'm, I'm hungry. hungry. I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh, I well, I don't gotta I'm go to gassy. the bathroom. I'm just gonna let it go. Like, yeah, they don't the world is their bathroom. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, they have like five emotions, basically. I don't know. I don't Who know. knows? I don't know enough. But you see babies doing the, like, they're, like, eating in their sleep. That's true. But no, like, the first time that we were going over this, like, Rachel had told me a dream, and she's, like, going through the dream, and I was like, I wonder what that means. I wonder what that means. And she didn't say anything. And I like, started talking about, like, the symbolism behind it and, like, what it could mean, and she's like, that's bullshit. No, I think <laughs> to, I think that you can overanalyze dreams. Some people could sit there all day and create something out of nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so, people yeah. do that with... So they could sit there on a dream that, like, could mean one thing, 
but to another person it means something completely different and it's full of bullshit. Well, yeah, of course. But that's, that's just like saying. the truth thing. Like, like uh, if you believe that the, I don't know, if you believe that this is black, then who am I to say that it's not? That's your truth. I know, yeah. Like so to I'm me, saying, this is white. This thing's white. But I'm saying, okay, as, as you yourself, like you could sit there and like overanalyze a dream into being something negative, but maybe it was like something positive. Sure. It could be either or. And also, it could be like a sign, like certain things that you dream about, it could be a sign that that's troubling you in like your day-to-day -day kind of stuff. Like it's a it's a different way of um, processing information, I think. What? Dream like your, your mind is, yeah, in your subconscious, you're, you're processing certain um, emotions or life events in different ways and it kind of gives you a new perspective that you weren't you wouldn't yeah no that's been it. able to think of in the daytime because you're distracted by everything else that's a hundred percent what this video is it's about. like a deeper kind of view yeah it's kind of a shame that you can't remember dreams or that sometimes you forget them you mean well, like, even the details, like, certain details, like, slip away seconds and seconds I, and seconds go by. My dreams are so insane that I think that if I could experience them as, like, an exact memory, I think I would be even weirder than I, like, I think I'd be, like, off really? the charts crazy. Yeah, I think it'd have, I like... I can't. If, unless I, like, s concentrate, like, super hard and try to slip back into it and, like, I don't know. It's just... It has to really stick with me to like make a yeah impact. But I think the most interesting thing that you said there is like how you use your dreams because I think of dreams like it, a dream is a tool. It, it gives you a window into your subconscious. You get to learn about you. Like if I'm driving around on empty, um, with my dad, like what's that mean about uh, being in the car? What's that mean about driving? What's that mean about my dad and I's relationship? I have no idea. I, I think my dad and I's relationship is just fine. So but at wanna... the same time, like maybe something's there that I'm not noticing and maybe I can ask him about it. Maybe I can have a discussion with myself about it. Maybe I can talk with you about it be like, what, what is this? What am I missing? What could I be, what could I see here to open up new avenues for, for my mind and my experience in life? Exploring it. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, I look at dreams like they're a tool. You can use them to learn more about you, and ipso facto, you end up having a better life for it. That's true. What's Aaron saying? Aaron, well, first he said boobs, because uh, I think he's talking about babies. Like, what do babies dream about? Boobs. Babies think. probably dream about boobs. Um, write them down with a dream journal. Yeah, I have a dream journal right beside my... I have heard of them, but never have used. That way you get all the details down. I've used a dream journal um, a lot, actually. Uh, for a couple of years, every time I would have a dream, and I was having dreams like every night, I'd sit there and scribble it down in the dark. So in the morning, you're kind of like, what the hell's going on? But so Joanne says, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. Seriously, it is. Yeah, yeah like, sometimes a dream is just a dream. So I can see your point of view, too, that, like, dreams can just mean nothing. Like, well, who knows? Also, Maybe they do. I can see that. I don't think that that's accurate, but I, I, can, I can see that perspective. And also, like, when you're kind of in that lucid state, you can kind of manipulate your dreams. You know I don't what I mean? Get to, I don't get to do that very often. I am getting really good at it. <laughs> because it's like you're not really in, in complete control. But it's like, you just think about it, and it's like, oh, I think I can make this dream go in this direction, or I think I can make it go in this direction. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But when it does, it's really cool. So in that way, I don't think that dreams are, like, necessarily as, I don't know. They have to be, I think they, they are. They have to be based on something, though. They are, but... I don't know, the dream journal thing is, I like the idea of maybe like in the morning, but like in the middle of the night, that would kind of mess my sleep up. Like, I don't know. I, I I'm like a professional. Like, I'm really good at like not just like a solid rock just right away. Just... Well, yeah, you're good at sleeping. I'm not. 
if I were to just like obsess that's practice about, though I know but I'm practicing believe me but you are like on another level like seven seconds but seriously but you I also, pillow and 15 seconds later I hear you snoring and I'm just like okay well what's going on like, what am I gonna dream about like uh, what's satisfied. going on now? <laughs> no, it's just like I I'm learning to slip into sleep easier. Um, I, thanks, I thanks to certain things like. Yeah. What are you doing to practice it? Because I do two I do two main things. What do you do? Well, Three. um, the distractions. Like I think having I I like having certain sounds on. Yeah. Like if it's a dead okay, silent. So like, if I hear any cert- sort of movement or, like, it kind of, like, wakes my body up. Like Yeah, of course. So, um, so like, if, like, if I'm slipping into a dream and then all of a sudden I hear that, then I'm awake. And I'm not going back to sleep for another ten minutes. That sucks. So, yeah. And you'll just, like, hear it and be like, oh, what was that? And then you're Unless I go running asleep. out, like, yeah. like a rhinoceros into the... The rest of the house. Yeah. One time we thought that the house was getting broken into, and Ru- I didn't. Well, Rachel didn't. I I did. I don't know if I was dreaming about something, but I just like tore out into the <laughs> like instantaneous. It was. I got all the way to like the and middle of the house before I figured out that black in the house. So I before I figured out that I was uh, that I was chasing after somebody that wasn't there apparently, but yeah. So like. <laughs> And bad dreams, like what about those, like nightmares? I think that's. What, I think I think you're seeing something there. Like uh, I had a I had a nightmare sort of dream one time that I had to walk into this like huge cathedral and I was like a SWAT team person and uh, this like banshee looking thing, like white witch sort of white hair, like all like zombied out, came and sort of running at me and I was like oh shit and I was kind of calm and I remember just like having this like super calm like I'm gonna get this. And, uh, and she came like jumping off the balcony. So she's like supernatural, uh, kind of looking, uh, looking thing. And she can't, and she's like scream, bloody murder, scary shit. Uh, but I was like super calm in the dream. And which is really funny because I'm a huge wimp when it comes to scary movies, but, uh, and in the dream, and this wasn't just me in the dream. It was like 50, 50. If I'm in the dream, I'm like 50, 50 in the dream and 50, 50 watching a movie. Uh, but I just like shot her in the head. <laughs> And the dream. And I remember getting that one analyzed, and the guy was like, well, I imagine you just killed one of your fears. You just confronted a fear in your dream. I was like, I don't know what that fear was. Yeah, I got her. Clowns. <laughs> it was not the fear of clowns. I will not see the movie. It. If anybody's seen the movie It, let me know how it is in the comments below. Uh, the movie It, like, super just terrible, like, ruined me when I was, like, four or five years old, or five or six years old. Or you get nightmares? I got a lot of nightmares. Um, but... Dreams are like I find dreams a little bit interesting, more interesting than I think most people do, just because I remember the first time that I didn't have a nightmare, and I was like, I think I was in first grade. That you didn't. I remember I had a dream. I would have a nightmare. I would have a nightmare every. No, I woke up without any dream at all. I had a nightmare every single night. I was terrified of the dark. I mean, awful. yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was like the worst dream. Some of them were like reoccurring dreams too. There was like these cat people that I was like a slave to. Well, My mean, mom and I were a slave to. It was like the weirdest. And it was like a, it was like a progressive dream, like reoccurring, but progressive, like a TV show. It was terrifying. So I don't know see, what nightmares that mean. that is like also kind of the thing I like about being able to control your dreams because like when you go into that kind of dark spot in your mind and you're like no I'm I'm gonna wake myself up because I used to have like the weirdest like like a little girl sitting on my chest and like choking me but it's like I was in the bedroom sleeping I had the choking dream you just have to like force yourself out of that like you need to wake up fully and See, get I don't out know. of that dream and slip into something See, else. Otherwise, well, I I just sat there with it. When I had the choking dream, I was like, I kind of had the wherewithal to be like, nobody's here. I'm inside the. I'm I'm in my room all by myself. Nobody's in this house. But yeah, if someone would have been like, uh, if someone would have bet me five thousand dollars that there was a person choking me right at that moment, I would have been like, I would give them. I would have been like, yeah, there's somebody choking me, and I would have been wrong and had to give up five thousand bucks, but. But I thought for sure somebody, I was like, no, you are perfectly safe. Confront this. Sit with this. 
I really think dreams are like there's some like there's something there. If you're scared in a dream, you need to sit with that dream and you need to face that head on because everybody's got this like dark, dreary, shitty place like their inner rascal or whatever you want to call it. Your inner hell. Your your. Yeah, it's not even like a necessarily a dream. It's like a feeling. It's like you, you don't like the direction that it's going. It's not positive. It's, it's like dark, like you're going to this stressful kind of sleep. Like I don't, I don't get anything out of that. It makes my, me feel like crap in the morning if I have dreams like that all night. Well, yeah, I mean, you're exhausted, but like if you didn't confront that. I know. Yeah, you can confront. If that's in your subconscious and you can confront it within your dream. I'd rather not. What do you mean? If that's if it is in your subconscious, and you can confront it there within the dream, why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Because sometimes it's like, it's like physical pain. Yeah, I know. I know, but it gets to the point where I'm just like, it's so physical that like I can't breathe and I have to wake myself up. Otherwise, I don't know. It's just. What if that fear was the fear that was holding you back from everything that you want in your life? What was the, it was the fear of bonding, it was the fear of, uh, I don't know, like doing a coffee shop, it was the fear of success, it was the fear of love, it was the fear of, you know, like all these fears that every, that everybody has a certain amount of. Well, in that moment, I don't know. I, I just know, I don't even know what the dream is about. I just know that it's like something is not, it's like almost evil. Everybody's got like... And the, not... Like, to not acknowledge, like, the evil side of you would be really sad. Like, everybody's got I'm it. acknowledging it, but I just, in that moment, like, that dream is just too much for me. It's just, it's physical pain. I don't want to experience it while I'm sleeping. I want to, like, <laughs> you want I want to recharge, not so wake it, up feeling defeated and, and, like, beat up. But if you run from it, you do get defeated. I'm not running from it. If you wake up... Well, I think when I am able to get out of that dream, I feel like I've defeated it. Okay. I'm like, oh, you're not gonna get get me tonight. <laughs> you're not gonna. So you did confront it then. I think I am because it's not it's not easy to do. It's hard. It's like you have to like use your all of your ability, your mind, to to wake up and like to realize that what is going on is not real. It's not reality. It's not something that you need to be putting yourself through. Well, it's as real as you make it. I know, but like to convince yourself when you're in a dream that something is not real, like when you're supposed to slap yourself in a dream. You're awake too, like you think like, like people, uh, like if you're, if you're scared to take the risk, you'll never, you'll, you'll never, uh, if you're scared to take the risk, uh, if you're scared of losing, you'll never take the risk to win. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, like, uh, I lost my train of thought, so I don't really know. <laughs> but, uh, like, um... This is really warm. Is it? We're about, we're about done on time. Um, I don't know. What's a, If you guys can put down in the comment section below the weirdest dream that you've ever had... I mean, that's opening up a can of worms right there, but if you have the guts to label out the weirdest dream you've ever had, um, I've had some weird ones. I've given some weird ones. So what do you think? Do you think that there's other perspectives besides... What's your perspective on dreams now? I think that the mind is powerful. It'll pretty much do whatever it wants. Yeah. So if it's trying to get you to realize something... In your dream then I'll do it but it also kind of likes to play tricks on you too I think yeah I think the the further you go the trickier it gets but you can use it as a tool yeah it's like it almost can psych you out yeah. but like but it's trying like to in that. everyday kind of situations you can psych yourself out as well yeah and you kind of have to push through that like the fear thing you can push yourself out of that as well just like a nightmare or yeah. a scary dream or whatever it is that brings you to that place. Yeah. So, like, to me, I look at it, like, even that stuff that you are talking about, like, uh, of sitting there and having to deal with the pain, like, I'm like, 
like I want to say that the more I I can endure, the stronger I become, the more powerful I become. So like I want to sit there and endure that because I want to confront it. Like like the scarier the thing is, the more I want that right in my face, so that I can yeah. surpass that. Because once you do that, then you get this mountain of courage on the other side, and then you can do more, and then you can do more, and then you can do more. It might get sneaky and pull up in front of you, and you don't even know it, but yeah. Your dreams That's put that right I in front of your face when you might not I've want to when you're awake. I've practiced it enough times and like been confronted with it enough times that I can, like when we're kids, we don't really know what a nightmare is until we just know that we wake up and we're crying, we're scared and like we don't know what exactly just happened and it can be a really scary thing. But like now, like when you see certain things when you were a kid that would t scare the fuck out of you it doesn't anymore and that's kind it's of the you got same that thing courage. exactly yeah. well you've already had to experience it you've it's already like had a... to like move past it and kind of just realize that it's not gonna hurt you yeah it's not gonna it's just gonna it's just a thing that happens yeah like we were talking about that about physical pain the other day and i was like i like there's no excuse to to uh react to physical pain like toughen up <laughs> the more physical pain that you can deal with and not react to, like the the better off you're gonna be. That's the same thing. It's like when you're a kid, like you don't really know what's going on. Like, am I dying? Oh my god, I have a cut. I'm bleeding. Oh my god. Usually, when you see blood, it means you're dying. But like to me, but I now, care enough to be like, no, get cut, up and deal with it. It's it's like, oh, I've experienced this before. I know what to do. I know what to expect. Yeah. I know it's gonna hurt like crap, but I can deal with it because I've already had to do it before. But if you focus on the pain, you just get more pain. I'm not saying focus on the pain. I'm just saying you have a plan for when that pain yeah. comes. You know, yeah. you've already gone through these steps. You've already gone through things like this in your head before. If you're, but if your plan is to run from the, the fear, or if your plan is to stand there and confront it. Aaron has a dream, I think. No, he already wrote. Oh, okay. Yeah. But we said that we'd finish this at one. Ian did. Ian has a dream? I think. I don't know. I didn't even see. Rachel, you're saying to wake up so you can realize reality that in reality that the fear and the dreams are irrational. So you take them head on in reality rather in the dream. Oh, wait. Okay. Let me read that again. So you can... So, you, yeah. So... <laughs> Maybe a good time to sign off. All right. What did get we'll come back to that. Um, we it's just, just on here. This is kind of funny. <laughs> All right. Thanks for being here, guys. We'll answer that question. What are you doing? I got it. This is fun. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll answer that question soon. All right. Thanks for being here. Really appreciate it. We're back tomorrow.